Cedric Burnside is a Grammy-winning musician who is currently touring for his brand new album, Hill Country Love. That tour includes three stops here in Texas. On May 9th, he's going to be in Houston at the Continental Club. May 10th in Austin at 310 at ACL Live at the Moody Theater. And the 11th will be in San Antonio at the Joe Long Theater. You can go to his website, CedricBurnside.net, for tickets to any of those shows or ACLLive.com for tickets to the Austin show. And again, that new album, Hill Country Love. And now Cedric is nice enough to join me to talk music and more. Cedric, thank you so much for the time. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Congratulations on the new album, Hill Country Love. You and I are speaking Thank on you. April 19th. You started the tour for this yesterday, as I just ran down for you, as if you don't already know. You're Correct. in pretty much every spot in the country and going to end up in Europe before it's all said and done. How excited are you to get this album out to the people and to get to perform it live as well? Oh, wow, man. Um, You know, this is a long time waiting. Um, I'm glad that the album is out, and I'm just looking forward to uh, promoting it well. Um, and I, I, I thank God that it's been doing really, really awesome. Uh, been getting really good feedback from it. Um, so I'm just really pumped up to, um, to get out there and play the favorite songs for the people, you know? So the common question that people have been asking you because your most recent album garnered you a Grammy a few years ago is, is there Correct. any pressure with this follow-up, but the little secret that you've uh, let me known in certain interviews is you actually recorded this album before you won that Grammy award. So I guess the question <laughs> there is, is why, uh, why the delay on getting this music out? Because this, this album is a, another really good one too. That's a great question, Trey. Um, you know, uh, I, I, first of all, to, to answer the question about the Grammy, I, I think that, you know, that was just one of many to come. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm sure of that. And, um, you know, the reason it took this album so long, um, I recorded it at the end of 2021, you know, before I won the Grammy in 2022. Um, but I was still promoting, you know, um, I'd be trying as well, hmm. you know. And um, and so one thing led to another, you know, um, it just took a little bit more time than I expected it to, uh, especially dealing with um you know, record companies and then dealing with the, the mastering of the of the album. Um, it's just certain time limits that they have to, you know, um, go by. And uh, that's what took it so long. Um, but I have to say, I am glad that it's out. Um, and if I have to say it, um, I think this is my best album yet. You know, um, uh, I really like it. I, um, my writing is um, it's different. Um, I think it has grown. Uh, my guitar playing, I think, has grown uh, as well as my my singing. You know, I, I think it has grown. Um, and so I, I know it will continue to grow. But I'm really proud of this album. You made a name for yourself initially as a drummer. You picked up the drums, uh, the drumsticks, I should say, as a kid and eventually got decent enough that you're Grandfather, the legendary R.L. Burnside, was allowing you to play with him at juke joints ap across the land. Uh, Correct. But our thing is a little bit more recent. You've been doing it for a while now, but you didn't really pick up the guitar until your early to mid-20s. And you also had to find your voice during that time as well. You've admitted in past conversations that you did start writing yes. songs around your early teenage years, but you were so nervous or so shy about sharing those with people that you had a notebook full of songs before you actually <laughs> let anybody know that you had these things. So uh, you feel like yeah. it's all coming together though. Those things for, that didn't necessarily come as natural for you musically initially are uh, something that you're all very proud of right now between the guitar playing, the songwriting, and then also your, your vocals too. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I thank the Lord for, you know, giving me this talent. But I also, you know, thank him for, you know, giving me, um, you know, uh, a, a really great way to um, structure my songs and and just knowing how to uh, put what I want in my songs. You know, um, I, I think everything is coming together with um, the structure of how I write my songs and um, definitely the the music, um, like the, the 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 lyrics and the licks that I like to play on the guitar. You know, for a long time, I was struggling in my in my mind of trying to play what I hear, 
you know, um, and especially when I was playing with other musicians, collaborating. Um, before I really got to where I can play what I want on the guitar, I had to struggle, you know, with trying to sound out what I hear in my head and kind of wait on, you know, uh, a guitar player to play what I had in my head. Well, they never could play what I had in my head, even though they would get close. It wouldn't be what I had in my head, you know. So now that I can play the guitar and um, and play what I want to play on it, I can play what I have in my head, you know, and uh, and I think, um, you know, it, it's it's unique. Uh, I, I think it's um, definitely different from anybody else, uh, which is something that Hill Country Blues is. Um, and I, I'm just appreciative and and um, happy to be able to put everything together right, um, you know, like I like I've been wanting to for a long time. So uh, I'm really really glad and proud of that. Thank is the Lord knowing, for it. Is knowing what you're what you want to play on the guitar is it as simple as just having played so many notes over the last two plus decades now, or did you actually seek out the advice of others, or maybe uh, maybe get some some professional educational input on how to make certain sounds? No, you know it's it just what comes out of me. I whatever comes out, I just let it go. But I have to say, um, you know. Spending all the time with my big daddy, Aya Burnside. Yeah. You know, even though I was playing drums behind him, uh, I was watching everything. You know, um, uh, from him doing his solo um set on stage, I, I watched his aura. It was so beautiful. You know, um, listening at his um, listening at his um, you know his his guitar licks and listening at his voice that matches his guitar licks. Um, you know, so I was sitting back there taking everything in. And so I, I kind of, you know, was thinking about the things that I saw him do, um, you know, as a kid and just as a teenager playing drums with him. And I kind of tried to incorporate that into what I do uh, and how I want my sound to sound. Um, and even though I don't sound, you know, exactly like my big daddy, there's a reason for that is because. I am doing my own thing. You know, I am making my own path. Uh, I think that's something that he would want uh, and, he, and he would be, you know, very pleased with. Um, but because I've been around him a whole life, um, whatever I write and whatever I do, um, it tends to have that energy that he had, um, which I love. You know, I, I can't get rid of it if I wanted to. Uh, it's just what's in me, you know. Yeah, that's really cool to hear because you didn't pick up the guitar until RL was starting to deal with his own health troubles. And so you couldn't really pick his brain Correct. about how to play the guitar yes. better necessarily. But it's great to wow, hear. Wow, you're so you right. Can, you can lean <laughs> on so that right. memory of having been behind him playing the drums, of course. And I'm sure at times he's looking back to you to make sure, making sure everything's good or to give you a wink or a smile. <laughs> but you can think back all those years and still extract lessons as it pertains to playing the guitar just because you guys were around one another so much and he was such a positive influence on you including oh, at yes. times where you weren't necessarily in front of crowds where he's just practicing or warming up in the morning as y'all are sitting there on the front porch or something with uh no yeah. no real worries to the day correct man um you know you're absolutely right trey i used to sit there and watch him um you know on the porch just practice a little bit when he get off the tractor you know, he would get off the tractor and he would play the guitar for 30 or 40 minutes, um, you know, while he taking a break. And then at night when he get off the tractor, you know, and, and finally come home for the night, um, sometimes before he go to bed, um, you know, I would sit there and watch him sit on the bed and play the guitar a little bit more. You know, so uh, those memories would always stick to me um, as well as, you know, I did get to play the guitar for him one time before he passed away. Um, I picked up the guitar for the first time, you know, around 2003, you know, somewhere up in there. And uh, after practicing on it for several months, um, you know, I was able to come up with a couple songs on my own. And and uh, my big daddy had never saw me, you know, play the guitar. And so he was laying on his sick bed, man. And, and um, you know, I just happened to go in there and, and ask him, you know, can I play a song for him? And, and of course he throwed his thumb up, you know, he was like, yeah. And so I played a song for him, you know, and, and he throwed his thumb up telling me that it was, it was good. You know, that was my way 
of knowing that, you know, he was proud of me for taking that step, you know, and, and, um, you know, to, to win that Grammy, it, it wasn't really all about me. It was, you know, it was really more heartwarming and, and, um, you know, just joyous for me to be able to bring it home for all the old cats, you know, for the Hill Country that, that opened the doors for us, you know, um, so I was really, really happy to, to do that. And it has, it had never been done before in the Hill Country. Um, and I think about him all the time. You know, I think about him all the time. What song did you play for him? Well, uh, I had um, came up with a song on my own. <laughs> and um, I, I forget the name of the song that I, I named it, but I had came up with a song. And, um, and you know, I was pilling around a little bit before I, you know, played the song for him because I had to get it all back together. Um, um, the Way I Am. That's the song I played for him. The way I am. That's the first song I I really wrote um, on the guitar, and that's the first song I recorded on my um, first solo. Is the way I am. Wow. Yep. So it's uh, interesting to learn about your family history. Y- y'all grew up, and your granddad, despite the fact that he would eventually garner acclaim, he was a farmer in the sharecropping era, and so you guys lived in correct. Relative poverty. I mean, it was a bunch of you living in a four room house, not a four bedroom house, a four room <laughs> yeah. house. But around the time that you got good enough to start to play with him was about that time that he started to get more, uh, more, uh, more widespread appeal, more widespread recognition for his talents. Is that something that you yourself were able to recognize that you could see your granddad finally receiving the proper due that he that he had deserved all these years as a, being such a talented musician? Oh, yes. Uh, I can definitely recognize it, you know, because uh, compared to, you know, just growing up as a kid, um, watching him share crop, um, you know, um, we was bar- barely able to to really eat. You know, um, what he did in the, in the fields was, um, you know, that – determine if we was going to, you know, eat or not. Um, and so the landlord would, would get half of the crops and he will give my big daddy some of the crops. And then the rest of it, they will take to the market to try to sell, you know, and that's, that was the whole deal uh, every year that he would do. And so when he started to travel a little bit more, uh, of course he made a little bit more money. Um, and it was a little bit easier for him to, you know, um, put food on the table. And so I, I definitely saw that difference. Uh, and when I started playing with him at age 13, um, you know, we, we had moved out of the, the four room house into, you know, something that was big enough for, you know, the, the family to stay in. Uh, it was a trailer, but we, we moved in a, a three bedroom trailer, um, you know, uh, a one full bath and a half, and that was, you know, that that was living in high cotton right there, you know, <laughs> for us. Um, so, yeah, I definitely saw the difference. So uh, even though you're now a Grammy winning musician, it's not like everything came easy for you. You've admitted that you've been close to quitting at times in your life. What was the lowest point with you in your pursuit of this musical passion? And ultimately, what allowed you to continue fighting and plowing forward to get to the point that you are today? Oh, wow, man. Um, that's a really great question. I, um, you know, my, my lowest point, I, I would have to say, you know, just, just putting the time in, um, to play this music and just feeling like, you know, um, I wasn't going anywhere, yeah. you know, uh, I, I would travel so much and especially after my d- big daddy passed, um, you know, he was, he was the backbone for the Burnside family. And of course, you know, he was the backbone for me. Um, you know, before I really got to know, you know, the Lord in my life and and incorporate him into the things I do, um, you know, I depended on my big daddy. You know, I, I depended on him for everything. And um when he passed, he was, it was he was kind he was kind of your God. He yes. was. He was. He was kind of my God. He 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 shouldn't have been, but he was kind of my God, you know, and, and um, so I, I looked up to him and and, um, you know, I didn't really know what I was going to do 
when he passed. You know, it, it was just everything was up in the air. And I was wondering to myself, should I really keep at it or or should I just try to find something else to do? You know, and and so, of course, I I, I continued to keep at the music because it was something that I really loved. Uh, and it was a part of me, you know, I, I, I feel like I, I was Hill Country Blues, you know, so I, I fought through it and I, I, I played with uh, other guitar players, um, you know, some I didn't really uh, fit in with, you know, I, I didn't really want to play with, but I had to play with. So I did things I didn't want to do. I played with people I didn't really want to play with. And, um, and it made me want to quit, you know, it made me want to quit. And so, um, I, I decided to, you know, buckle down and um, really, really get into the guitar so I can come up with my own sound and um, what I hear in my head and hopefully, you know, make new music like I'm doing and and travel, you know, just like I did with my big daddy. Um, it took a while, um, but here I am, you know, and I, I think um the good Lord and, and my big daddy, Aria Burnside, you know, for giving me that chance. You know, he didn't have to let me go on the road with him at age 13. He could have picked anybody. Um, but he he got me. He trusted me and um, and he wanted me. So um, I, I'm just very grateful, you know. This new album was recorded in a building that is 150 years old that you were looking at at one point to try and turn into a juke joint, one of those old school style <laughs> yes. places that you uh, loved cutting your teeth in back in the day. The juke joint didn't happen, at least uh, just yet. But uh, during that process, you realized that wooden building created a beautiful sound. My question for yes. you, though, uh, Cedric is what exactly is a juke joint? I've heard the term before. I, I don't think I've ever been in one and I, I I've never really taken the time to look in, to see what exactly a juke joint is. Well, um, you know, people think that, you know, juke joints have to be this old building, um, you know, that people have and, and they turn into a juke joint. Well, that, you know, that's, that's a juke joint, but a juke joint don't have to be just a building where people meet at, people, you know, can make their houses out of their juke joints, you know, um, that your house can be your juke joint. Um, because, um, Mr. Junior Kimbrough, before he got his juke joint, um, he made his house, his juke joint, you know, people used to come there every weekend and, um, you know, drink beer and just have a good time at his, at his house, uh, before he got his building. Um, so I have to say a juke joint is just really what, what, what you make it, you know, uh, it's all about having a good time. Um, and you didn't really have a lot of fancy, you know, clubs or, or dive bars to go to. So you had to kind of create your own space, um, to have fun, you know, to, to collaborate with people, to, to gather with people, you know, fellowship with people. And, and a lot of people made their houses. Uh, and a lot of, you know, old uh, outhouses that they had uh, for storage, uh, they cleaned them out and made those, you know, for juke joints. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's where they come from. Um, and even today, you come to North Mississippi, man, and you can just about go to a house party somewhere, you know. <laughs> All right. Love to hear that. I think I have been to a couple of juke joints. And uh, now that you define <laughs> it like that. And you have <laughs> Hill Country Blues a few times now. Uh, I don't know how many people are familiar with Hill Country Blues. It is a lesser known style, but still uh, a certainly a style all its own. So what is it that separates Hill Country Blues from all these other different types of blues out there? Well, um, I, I'm going to have to say, you know, the, the unorthodox style of Hill Country Blues, you know, it, it can have a, a rhythm that you know, people would think that is just off the beaten pattern, you know, um, a lot of times. And, you know, just being around my big daddy and and Junior and, you know, Other and the Cats and Miss Jessica May Hipfield, um, I didn't see them use the one four five that much. You know, um it, it wasn't like your regular twelve bar blues. It was definitely something that, you know, um come from their heart and um you know, you either liked it or you didn't, but it had its own unique style uh, of rhythm, you know, um, and that's I think that's what made 
Hill Country Blues stand out from any other music that you might hear is just that it's, uh, you know, it's, it's unorthodox rhythm uh, of, of the music. You know, um, it's just something that's within itself. You know, um, I don't think you can write it on paper. Uh, I, I don't think anybody can, you know, read it. Um, it's just something that you have to really listen at and try to play it. You're either going to get it or you're not. <laughs> so people watching and listening in Austin right now might be saying to themselves, Hill Country Blues. I didn't realize Austin had its own style of blues because Austin is here in the Texas Hill Country. In the hills. Yep, that's Talking right. about that's the right. Mississippi Hill Country, though. But I say that to ask you because your current tour for Hill Country Love, your new album that came out on April 5th, does include three stops here in Texas. You're going to be in Houston on May 9th. Correct. Austin the 10th and San Antonio the 11th. Here in Austin, you're actually going to be at 310 at ACL Live at the Moody Theater. People can go to your website, CedricBurnside.com or ACLLive.com to snag those tickets. My question for you based on all that, though, Cedric, Hill Country Blues as well as the Mississippi Hill Country, you're going to be here in the Texas Hill Country. Do you have any fond memories of playing here in Austin, considering Austin obviously has its own uh, deep history with the blues as well? Oh, yeah. I I, I love Austin, man. Um, and also, my, my website is CedricBurnside.net. Um, and so, um, yeah, CedricBurnside.net. I will make that edit yeah. where you don't have to say yeah. my apologies. And um, uh, I, every time I come to Austin, man, it's always a great time. Um, the last time I played in Austin, it was at Antone's. And um, and um, I used to come there all the time and play the Continental Club. Oh, yeah. Um, and boy, that, you talking about a party. Uh, we, we would have a party every time we come there. Um, so I am I'm looking forward to coming to Austin, man, and um, just just jamming out and, and having fun. Uh, I think the last time I was there... Um, uh uh gary was there gary clark jr uh, oh, yeah. was in town and he came out and jammed with us a little bit oh is that um, right so, yeah. I, I saw yeah, gary, came out. gary and i go way back we hung out back in the day had mutual friends i actually saw him he was open or he was playing a show at emos during south by southwest and he recognized me in the yeah. crowd and was like hey come hang out after the fact which i did for a few minutes it was <laughs> great to get to catch up with that dude he's obviously a freaking rock oh, man. star at this point but he's he still is. like the the most modest humble dude just a guy with a, uh, a very, i know right <laughs> a very funny disposition a great sense of humor I'm, I'm so happy for him that he's uh been able to achieve this level of success you know yeah likewise likewise i i, I love gary i love his parents man his mom and dad would, <laughs> would come to the show and they would just laugh and and dance and have fun um really good people <laughs> I didn't get a chance to talk with uh, with his mom, but I did chat with Gary Senior for a little bit as well. It's it's great to see yeah. him uh, really <laughs> really embracing uh, what his son has been able to do and uh, and uh, carve out a nice existence for all of them. By the way, it's kind of a family business, yeah. Well, which I think is the right way to do things. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. So uh, you obviously win that Grammy for I Be Trying. Other than the obvious, which is it is the best traditional blues album back in 2021. Musically speaking, why do you think that album won you your first Grammy, Cedric? Well, uh, I, I like to think that, you know, um, they enjoyed the music. You know, I, I like to think that, um, you know, um, somebody on the panel was like, wow, this album should be the one, you know, um, but I, I also think that, you know, uh, it's I, I know I'm different. You know, I'm, I'm different from any other music that you might hear out there in the traditional world, um, traditional blues world. And, um, you know, I, I just, um, you know, I love what I do. And um, for a long time, you know, this sound um, was was really like under under a rock, you know, um, and my big daddy kind of started making it famous, you know, in, in the late nineties, you know, the mid late nineties. And so, um, you know, I, I'm just glad that this music is starting to get the recognition, um, that it's been waiting so long for, you know, um, it, it should have been out there a long time ago. Um, but the timing is, is, is what it is, you know, um, um, uh, it's supposed to come out when it's, when it come out. And I'm just really glad that, um, it's starting to get the recognition and um, that Grammy really, really helped, uh, you know, Mississippi Hill Country Blues a lot. And so I'm just looking forward to, you know, using that momentum 
and running with it, you know, and making more um, great hill country blues, um, modern, but, you know, also traditional, because that's what I love and that's what's in my heart, you know, and it's where I come from. Um, but I am looking forward to just putting more music out there for people to um, love and dance to and also relate to, hoping they can relate to it, you know. So that wasn't your first Grammy nomination. You'd been nominated for a couple of others. Was there a significant difference from Grammy nominee to Grammy winner for you personally in the uh, the two years since you won that award? Oh, man, yeah. Um, you know, being nominated for a Grammy, it's, it's great. You know, it's, it's awesome. Um, but it's another world to win a Grammy. You know, um, um, Abby Tron was my third Grammy nomination and first Grammy win. Yeah. Um, and so since I have won the Grammy, it definitely has, you know, opened up more doors, um, g give me bigger places to play, you know, um, took me up a couple of levels. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm in a good place. Uh, and I, I just thank the Lord for it. And, uh, and my big daddy, I up Burnside and I'm just looking forward to the future and, um, just to see what the universe got for me, you know, <laughs> love to hear that. Did I read correctly that you had a cameo in the Samuel L. Jackson movie, black snake moan, or was that just BS that I read on the internet? It was not, <laughs> I, I got the chance to, um, yeah, to be in that movie, um, Fat Possum, which was the record company my big daddy was under, yeah. um, you know, they, they kind of, um, set that up for me. Um, but, uh, Craig Brewer, which is the, um, movie producer of that movie, he wanted, uh, some of my big daddy music to be in that movie, but he wasn't aware that my big daddy had passed. And so um, when he found out that my big daddy had passed, uh, he, the next best thing that he wanted was his band, which was me and, uh, and Kenny Brown. And so um, he kind of, you know, went through some things and uh, uh, did some things to his strip. And um, he called Fat Paws and he was like, well, can I have that band? Uh, can I have Cedric and Kenny? And, you know, the rest is history. We spent about six months with uh, Samuel Jackson and, and Christina Ricci, and uh, it turned out to be a, a really cool time, you know, really, really cool time. I hope that you got to hear Samuel L. Jackson say the F word a couple of times in that six months. Uh, <laughs> maybe once, maybe once, man. He was, you know, he he was he was on his uh he was on his good times. He was on his P's and Q's, you know. Um, um, he might have said it once, and that was that was off off the, the camera, you know, just having fun at at parties, you know. <laughs> of course uh you also love to cook i i love to cook for my family as well what are some of your favorite things to make everybody you're uh you've got four daughters now which holy cow that's a completely different line of questioning yes <laughs> you're right <laughs> but i love them man i love them yeah. they bring joy to me um you know some of my favorite foods is uh my big mama used to cook for us a lot and um you know i i, I like beans uh, you know, I, I like baked stuff like cornbread and biscuits, uh, which I'm pretty good at, you know. Um, and so uh, those are some of my favorite things I like to cook. Um, and uh, one what's, savory what's, thing. What's the key? What's the key to a good cornbread? Well, um, you know, milk. Um, I, I prefer buttermilk. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, depending on what kind of flour, you know, and, and cornmeal you use. And I have to say, I don't use measurements. I just kind of estimate. Uh, because that's what my big mama used to do, you know, she just estimate how much she put in there. And, um, and so yeah, I, I, I use that, you know, a little, little baking powder, a little salt here and there. And if you want it kind of sweet, you use, you know, a little sugar in there and, and, um, whip it up real, real good, you know, and, um, dust your pan with a little cornmeal, a uh, little Crisco oil and, and, um, you know, you got yourself some cornbread coming. <laughs> Oh man, you got my mouth watering right now. All right, you do have four dollars. Oh wow! <laughs> the youngest is uh, just under two years old right now. Bless you for that. I've got yes. two, got a nine and yes. seven year old, and that feels like too many. That feels like too, too many at <laughs> times. So I set all that up though to ask you because uh, you do have that unique perspective, and not just having four kids, but four daughters, which is mind blowing. Uh, what do you think the biggest yeah. challenge is for parents here in twenty twenty four, Cedric? 
Um, man, that is a great question. Um, but I, I think it's um, the biggest challenge is making sure that your kids, you know, just really walk the right path um, because it's so easy um, to go the wrong way. You know, it's so easy. And, and the reason I say that is it's so much in the world today that wasn't here when when I was a kid, you know, when you was a kid, um, you know, they got social media all over the place. You know, you got the computers can can take them the wrong way. Um, you know, phones can take them the wrong way. You know, even TV today can take them the wrong way. So it's so many things that can take your kid off the, the right path. And um, the thing about it is you won't even know it. You know, it happens so quickly and so smoothly these days. So you won't even know it. Um, so just, I, I pray with my kids a lot, you know, and, uh, and I always tell them the truth. Um, and I tell them the truth because, uh, you know, I don't want them doing the things that, um, I made a mistake doing, you know, um, and I know that's, that's kind of, uh, what all parents say, but when I say, I tell them the truth, I tell them the truth, you know, um, um, like I, I was with a lot of women in my day. You know, I I tell my kids that, you know, I, I tell them that it's, it was wrong. You know, you, it's something that I shouldn't have did. Um, uh, I tell my kids all types of things like, you know, my dad, you know, uh, my dad, we wasn't really close. Um, you know, but I thought back in those days that, you know, it was good to sash your dad. It was good to, you know, tell him about himself, um, you know, because he wasn't there or, or the things he didn't do. Um, but they only did what they knew, you know, and, um, it was a while before I found that out. And, um, and I had to tell my kids that it's, it's never, you know, good to sass your parents. It's never good to get upset with your parents. Um, you know, you can ask them things and, and ask them for the correct answer to things and ask them to be truthful to you if they're not truthful. Um, but it's never good to sass them, you know, and, and I found that out, you know, in in a hard way. Um, um, but, you know, I, I thank the Lord that I did find it out uh, in time enough to tell my kids, um, you know, things things like that. So I, I think that's the hard um, that's the hardest thing for parents today is um, making sure their kids stay on the right path, you know, to righteousness. Well, I think a big part of that is something that you just touched on there. And I, it's something that I try and do with my kids also. And that's be honest with them. And that includes yes. apologizing when you make mistakes and talking to them about the mistakes that you've made in life. And maybe yes. it's a situation that they find themselves in at a given point in time. But them seeing that you're human in a weird yes. way makes you more of a superhero in their eyes because they see even the people that they look up to the most can screw up. And so it yes. leads oh, to them wow, being yeah. a little bit more honest with themselves, honest with others and uh, able to let it go when they do make those mistakes, you know? I, I agree, Trey. And, and you know, another thing, being honest with your kids, man, um, you know, sometimes it can hurt and sometimes it can be embarrassing and and you think to yourself, man, I really did that. You know, uh, uh, it, it can be a lot of things that you don't want them to see. But I think for them to, for them to see that, to see the look on your face, to see the hurt that you had, to see the embarrassment that you, you know, you got for it helps them to understand that uh, I don't want to do that. You know, I, I don't want to go down that path. You know, I don't want to make that mistake. Uh, I see how it hurt dad. Uh, I see how it embarrassed dad. So I, I think that's another thing um, that's that's really good. You you being honest with them and they really see the expression on your face. Um, and that's something that parents don't really want to show their kids a lot. You know, yeah, we got to not be afraid of hiding those sorts of things. All right. Last question now, Cedric. Thank you Correct. so much again for the time today. Uh, Going to keep yes. it simple here. What do you love about the blues? <laughs> wow. Um, what I love about the blues is that's another way that you can stay truthful to yourself, you know? <laughs> well, at least it is to me. Um, uh, when I write my music, I try to write it according to how I live my life and just the things that I've been through and family and friends been through. Um, and just to, you know, uh, another thing, that's another question that comes back to, um, you might, it might be embarrassing. Um, it might be hurtful. 
Um, but I stay true to my music and hope that people can relate to it and understand it, you know, and maybe they done been there and done that. Um, that's the best thing about blues to me is um, it's a way to stay honest, you know, stay truthful to yourself. Beautiful. He is Cedric Burnside. The new album is Hill Country Love. You can get it now wherever albums are sold or streamed. Came out on yes. April 5th. And he is in the midst of an international tour for that. He's in the U.S. right now. We'll end up in Canada and Europe this summer at some point. Uh, Correct. Two include three here in Texas. May 9th in Houston at the Continental Club. May 10th in Austin at 310 at the Moody Theater. And May 11th in San Antonio. That's at the uh, Joe Long Theater. You can go to his Correct. website cedricburnside.net to Correct. get tickets for any of those shows or maybe for someplace else in the country or internationally you have a chance to check him out highly highly recommend it a great representation for the hill country blues cedric thank you so much for the time today best of luck on you're this welcome tour and safe travels to and from everywhere man thank you trey thanks for having me man thanks to gentleman jesus for the intro and outro music hear more of his work at gentlemanjesus.com Thanks to you for hanging out. For more of the show and to connect on social media, visit booksonpod.com. We'll talk to you next time. Books on Pod. Mm-hmm.